Hello and welcome back to the Not The Old Firm YouTube channel. My name is Ben Banks and today to cap off our mini series of League Cup interviews ahead of the ties in the semi-final that happened in this weekend, we have got an interview with St Mirren. League Cup winner from 2013, Mark McCausland. We have got the other three teams on our channel covered, Derek Lilly for Livingston, Peter McDonald for St Johnston and Rob Jones for Hibs. So do check them all out. They're all on our YouTube channel and on our website in written form as well, as well as our social rain see video clips and things like that from these interviews. But today's Mark McCausland. He had a very up and down time at St Mirren, I think it'd be fair to say. Obviously won the League Cup. He's got relegated with St Mirren, so he's had a bit of everything. But in his own words, it was the best time of his career, especially in that moment in 2013, where he played at centre-half with current St Mirren manager Jim Goodwin, playing in that defence uh, that helped them get over the line in games against the likes of Celtic. And then obviously the final speaks for itself. Um, he joins me to speak a bit, a bit about his time in Iceland. He's obviously settled over there now after playing his football in, out there for a few years now. His thoughts on his time at St Mirren, what it takes to succeed in a cup game like this that St Mirren will face when they play Livingston on Sunday and a bit about how he sees that game and how it could pan out. So we hope you do enjoy. Do remember to subscribe to the channel and like this video and keep up to date and look out for all the rest of our content coming in the next week or so. So we hope you do enjoy. Uh, as I've said before, subscribe to the channel and until next time, take it easy. Mm. So obviously it's a competition um, and a few people as well that you have got a bit of history with. Um, do you still keep up to date with St Mirren, obviously one of your former teammates in there? Aye, I, I do, I do. Um, I mean, more so now that Jim Goodwin's taken over. Um, I was quite close to Goodie when I played, when we played together, and I, I keep in touch with him even even to now. So um, I've got more of an interest now that, that Goodie's in charge there, and um, I'm keeping an eye on the results every week. Mm. It's been a bit of an odd one. In the first season, he did well, but this season, I think, um, especially in the last few weeks, they've been going really well. I, they had a difficult start just just due to the COVID situation. They had a lot of players picking it up and, and they were in quarantine quite quite a lot. So uh, now that they've got the whole squad back and, and they're avoiding um, the COVID situation a bit better, then they're, um, they've, they've pushed themselves up the league and, and now that they're in the semi-final. So they're doing well. Mm, obviously, it's, it's a competition you've got, obviously, fun memories of it. Get into that, and what are you sort of up to now? I know speaking to you just on um, social media and things like that. Um, coaching is where you're at now. I I done my B license here in Iceland. Um, just finished it in the summer, so I'm I'm coaching. Uh, last year I was actually a, a assistant player coach uh, for my club, but that was that was kind of brought on me um, as a bit of a surprise. Um, I, I was just thinking about signing as a player um, with another club. And then the club I'm at now approached me to be player coach. So um, I just kind of, it was a situation that I just took in and thought, aye, why not? Um, it was a it was a couple of divisions lower than, than what I've been playing at. Um, so that's... Is this, is this in Iceland somewhere? Right? Iceland, aye, in Iceland, a club called Njervik. Um, they're in the, they're in the third tier, um, but it's, it's a club that's right close to where my house is. So... Um, and then having a baby last year as well, uh, I thought it was a good option. Um, five minutes from my house and the club wanted to go back into the second league straight away. So we didn't do that last year, unfortunately. Um, we had a few injuries and we just weren't good enough. We finished third. And um, so hopefully um, we can do it this year. But the, the, the guy who was who asked me to come in as assistant manager, he got, he's left now. He's already got sacked. And... Um, now that my position is just back to playing, so I'm the captain. I'm playing, and I'm I'm taking under twenties now, so like the, the kind of second team. Um, and a new coach and a new assistant coach just came in, which is good for me because last year I really struggled to do both to be a coach and to be playing. I was still playing a hundred percent, training a hundred percent. It it was hard to be playing and coaching uh, with the same team. I mean, it's okay to do coaching with a, with a younger younger group um, which, I, which I've been doing for, for a few years here but to be player coach I felt I found it difficult because I was still playing so much 
Right, obviously, um, I don't know how many people watching this will be Icelandic football experts and stuff. I know. But for them, um, but for folk interested, like um, about the professional rank and stuff, wait, how does that work? Well, obviously, here in Scotland, over here, we've got even in League One now, we've got a couple of professional teams, but championship yep. teams mainly full time. Yeah, but- is that what we, t- we, we train we train five times a week so it's the same the same amount of training as as like the, the two top divisions maybe even some clubs in league one but it's not the same professionalism like it's still classed as semi-pro here mm-hmm. and that's a lot to do with avoiding tax um so you can you can you can avoid the tax quite a bit if if the clubs don't become professional and there only is a only is a few clubs that in Iceland that they could probably they are big enough and have enough money to turn professional. Um, but they, they train they train like four or five times a week and, and have a game one day. So it's it's still a lot of training. The boys are fit. Um, the lev the level is in the top league. The level is probably I would say the top half championship. Maybe the bottom two or three teams in the in the Premiership in in Scotland. Um, it's kind of, I would say in Iceland, it's a wee bit split up as well. The top, top probably six, seven teams are, are, are decent. They're like similar to St. Johnston, St. Mirren, Livingston, Hamilton, these kind of clubs. But then the bottom four or five clubs are maybe your top end championship. So it's, it's a decent level. It's, it's all right. And the boys are they're, they're technically decent. Um, but you, you tend to find the top like the best 11 players and 11, 12, 13 players in the team are good or decent players, but then they fill the rest of the spaces up with youth players or, or players that are not as, as good. So the squads aren't as big. Yeah, it's definitely, I know it's maybe tailed off a wee bit in the international scene in the last couple of years, but yep. early to the sort of early 2010s or the late 2010s, like it was really Icelandic football was going strong. I, even, even up to maybe two years ago, I mean, they qualified for for the World Cup. They qualified for the uh, the Euro, the European Championships as well. So they done that's the first time they'd, they'd ever done that. So to do it like two years consecutively was was massive for the club. And and I was here when they done that. I think it was two thousand sixteen and two thousand and eighteen. And everybody everybody went like there wasn't many people still left in the country that, that, that hadn't been or, or hadn't experienced it like a lot of people went to France and then if they didn't go to France they went to Russia so for, for being such a small nation and, and being able to go to a major tournament it's, it's, it's incredible how they've done it How you that's, you've been over there what good few years now you... five, aye, five, five years next month that will be well, you ever think about coming back are you over there and no, no I, I I did think about coming back. I had a few offers. Uh, I, I first signed for two years, and I enjoyed that. It was really good. Um, and that, but before I signed my new contract, um, I had a few offers to come home into England. But I just I like the life down here. It's really different to back home. There's no pressure. Everyone's really laid back. It's it's a really relaxed, chilled way of living, um, and it, it suits me. There's a it's. The weather, the weather is the only thing that, that's maybe the downside. Um, it can be difficult sometimes, especially in the winter. It's really dark all the time, and it can be quite where I'm. It's really quite windy and cold, and that, like just like normal, like normal for winter. That's but a bit, a, a bit, I know, I know, a bit extreme. But the upside is you get for maybe. Eight to ten weeks in the summer, which is which is brilliant. But I would say the, the, the most difficult thing is probably the weather in the winter. But I enjoy it. I, I enjoy it. I just enjoy everything. I met my girlfriend here. We've had a baby, bought a house and stuff. So now I've got no plans to come home uh, anytime soon. And and she's experienced Paisley, where I'm from, and. She's no, uh, nah, it's not, uh, it's not for her, that, basically, to be honest. So, um, oh, we're, we're quite settled here and, and, and I'm happy still being up here. Good stuff. Um, looking back on your sort of time in Paisley and stuff, where with everything you achieved there, I mean, Jim Spear speaking to him weekly, Jim speaks about him, his picture and your pictures and stuff on the wall in the building enough. Um, 
one of the happiest times in your career? Aye, definitely. Um, 2013 was was a big season for myself. Um, when the way the way we won the cup and we finished quite high in the league and stuff. Um, was it's, winning the cup is the highlight of my career. It's the best thing I've done in, in, in my career. And I'm now 32. I'm not going to do anything better. Um, so I do look it back at look back at it and with fond memories and. Um, I've, but I can't, I can't say I've watched the game or, or anything like that. I've not done anything like that recent, recently. I mean, some memories pop up on Facebook and other other things now and again, and, and it makes you think back to it. Um, but the way the way my career ended at St Mirren was the last season of my contract was a bit disappointed. I didn't. I was injured a lot of the season. I played with tendonitis. I was struggling with my knee, and we weren't doing well. And the club was struggling and the team was struggling and probably after maybe February time it just looked like we were going to be going down there was nothing we could do we made a lot of changes that season there's a lot of new players came in who weren't good enough um, and a lot of the players just like myself probably weren't good enough that season and that's why we went down so I cut my, cut my, cut my contract short uh, I think I ended my contract in April just because I wanted to get fit. I was playing through injury like for maybe four months and I, and I just thought, I'm at a contract here, I need to think about myself a wee bit and that's why I came to the, the decision just to just to cut it short by a few months and, and, and concentrate on getting myself back fit and ready to move on to the next challenge. Yeah, it was just um, the usual thing. I always go through Twitter and stuff to see what sort of a fan's impression of you and the one thing that I always seen was that no matter what um, your opinion of, of you from a St Mirren point of view was as a fan whether they liked you or whether they loved you I doubt that was very much the case with what you achieved um, but you always gave 100% was the thing that sort of jumped out to me I, I mean I'll tell you myself I'm not the best the best player in the world I'm not technically the best the most gifted either but if I can then if I'm on the pitch, I'll, I'll do 100%. I'll give 100%. Even if I'm having a bad game, I'll try and just keep going and and uh, see what it takes us. Um, I've played with much better players in my career at St Mirren and other clubs. Um, but St Mirren is my hometown club. I'm from Paisley. And um, if anyone, if you speak to anyone around the town, they'll know that they, they have a soft spot in my heart. And, and it's, a, it's a team that I supported growing up. And, I always, I always have something for them, but um, you just kind of move on, move on from it. But um, I was a wee bit disappointed the way the way it ended, and but I mean that's football, that's football for you. But I had the best time of my my career there, winning the cup, and 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 probably making a lot of people happy around the town and people who support St Mirren who had maybe not been, maybe maybe not had the best success over the years, and and a lot of people hadn't seen St Mirren win a major trophy like that um, so to do that and to play as much as I did in kind of every game and 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 be quite a big part of that, that cup winning team was is, is something to be proud of for myself yeah, I know um, it's obviously a lot different this year fans can't go to, to Hamden and stuff like the wood and things like that but it is one of those things provincial clubs if you will and the other sort of three teams as well like it is such massive mm-hmm. As you say, I don't. St. Mirren haven't been back to the semi-finals. I don't think since then. Um, so. No, I don't think so. Um, it's just it's it's difficult having no fans. Um, it's kind of, I mean, we don't get many fans here. Uh, just just the way just the way the way it works here. So to try and sometimes get yourself motivated the same way as you would if it was a full house or if there's many fans in is is it's a it's a mind thing over anything. You just need to. Not think about it and just just go on with it and just do the same. You 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 would whether it was a full house or not. Um, but but definitely the, the fans lift you and they give you a, a, an extra a boost, maybe five ten percent that they they, they 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 don't do if they're not there. So it's going to be a different experience, especially Hampton. It's a big place and and it's it's um it's a big park and to have no fans in, it's going to be it's going to be difficult. But I mean it's the same for both. Both teams, so we can't have any complaints and just we just need to go for it and, and do their best on the day. And hopefully, it'll be good enough. Aye, 
Because one of the things I've spoken from people I have spoken to is that because you've not got Celtic, Rangers, Aberdeen, even if you want to throw Hearts in the mix there, yeah. it's knocked out at this stage. It's going to be a real, especially for St Mirren and Livingston, because I think Jim and uh, Davy Martindale both said that it's the best draw both of them could have got. Aye, I think so, definitely. Like, um, if, I, if, I, if I go back to when we won, I mean, we beat Celtic in the semi final. But we were going into that game as, as massive underdogs. No one gave us a chance. Everyone was thinking, ah, they'll just they'll just be there for Celtic to run over. And the way it worked out, it, it was it was great for us to be underdogs because there was no pressure. Like I said, like Celtic, they, they, they were supposed to turn up and beat us. And um, we gave everyone a shock that day. And, but it wasn't a shock during during the game. We, 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 we were really good and we deserved to go through. I think it was 3-1. And then they scored in the last minute or the last kick of the ball to make it three two. So, so we were comfortable. Big Sammy done us, done us a great turn and saved a pen, saved a penalty during that game. And, and that game was a massive lift. And um, I think I think it was a big positive for us to go in as, as underdogs that day. But on with Sunday's game coming up, both teams are very evenly matched, both roughly same size and and. They're, they're, they're similar squads as well, so it's a 50 50 game. Um, so there could you could say there's a wee bit more pressure on the club now or, or on both clubs now than there was when we won it because no one thought that we would go through. So if if they don't go through, then people are going to say, like, why? What, why is the reason? What's the reason for that? Were they not good enough on the day or were they not trying enough? So there's going to be questions asked, um, but. I, th- I think she- I'm quite confident. I think she's going to go through. Yeah, so we're just recording this before Livingston play Celtic, and you tell like they've an eye on the final because I think they've made six changes um, right. to their team um, for Celtic. So they've clearly got um, one eye on it, despite the fact they're playing a Celtic team, albeit who are um, a-, a bit of a nick, I think it would be fair to say. Yeah, yeah, but I, 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 I don't, I, I, I totally understand why, why they're resting players because. It's the biggest. It's going to be one of the biggest games in in, in a long time for Livingston as a football club as well. For them to get to a, a national final is, is massive. Just the same. It's the same as it is for a club like St Mirren. So I don't I don't blame them for resting seven players. But they're on a great run right now. They're doing really well, and they're you can nearly say overachieving in the league. They're picking up points that people wouldn't think they're picking up. They would pick up, and um, I mean it's. I mean, it's going to it's going to um, always come come down to to how they both turn up on the day. But I would say Livingston are, are, are on a better run right now than than St Mirren have been. Yeah, yeah, that's not St Mirren have been on a decent run to it. Probably yeah. testament to what I think they they won eight in the spin and then a draw at Parkhead. Obviously, by the time knowing this, but in the uh, the way I'm saying this, they're going to get beat four 0 by Celtic or something. But. Um, <laughs> No, in the whole, I don't think that will even matter the result or whatever. Um, no. Because um, they're both evenly matched squads, but probably Livingston just on the form they've been on have just been mental, really. It's unheard of for clubs like Livingston to do that. Yeah, definitely. Just it's, It sometimes happens when a new manager comes in or as a in the staff. And, and that's obvious to see that that's happening with Livingston right now. And fair play to them. Well done. And we'll just. I hope it ends on Sunday, but you never know. Yeah. Just don't obviously spoke about a wee bit at the start, but Jim Goodwin is um how much he's obviously a, a St. Mirren legend already for 23rd, yeah. but where does his status go in terms of what I suppose you could, I don't want to tempt fate then, but do you start putting the all-time bracket if he manages to win this trophy as a as a manager and a player? I, I don't see why not. I don't think there's anyone. I don't think there's anyone to do that. Um, I'm not sure. Going back on the Mirren's history, I'm not sure. Um, but if I mean, there's one legend that, that, that comes to mind for me who who and like Tony Fitzpatrick. Um, he he was, I think he he was in the cup winning squad in '87 for St Mirren, and and he went on to manage the club. But I'm not sure how 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 well he'd done. Um, but I was thinking about that the other day. There can't be there can't be anyone. I don't think there's anyone to win the same cup as a player and as a manager. And for St Mirren, for someone to do that at a club like St Mirren is incredible, at any club really. So, 
I don't know, but I would I would say it was definitely legendary status. You have to, you, I would have to say. Mm. Ayo, I, um, not surprised by how because it's been a natural progression for him. Really, he's went to Alwa, learned his trade a bit, and then he's gone. To yep. You can tell that there's a there's a really good. It's probably one of the better St. Mirren squads in terms of individual talent we've had in a long time. Definitely. Um, when when Jim when I played with Jim, um, I played beside him at centre back, and he also played in front of me in midfield. And you could tell just the way Jim read the game, spoke about the game, that he, he was going to be be a manager. You just you could tell you, you have players like that who you can who you wouldn't be surprised if they became a manager. Um, and and Jim's done it the way it should be done, starting at a, a smaller club and, and and building his way up and um, with. with just with everything, with the recruitment that he's that he's had this season as well, is is has been really good. I, I I don't know who's helping him with the recruitment if it's him himself, but he knows football and he knows players, and and you can see he's he's, he's brought over a couple of boys from Ireland and stuff. I don't know if that's through his own connections over and there. A couple, and, a couple's being light anytime I'm at St. Mary's Park for games. And there's a tricolor above the stadium with him. <laughs> I know there's a few over there now. I know, I know. But fair play, like they're doing well and and and. The, Jim's obviously seen them as, as as great assets for the club, and 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 they're putting they're doing, they're doing it right. So I don't see I don't see why anyone should have a problem with it. So it's it's good, and and, and I can't praise Jim enough. He's a great guy, and I, I'm happy that he's getting the success that he deserves. Mm-hmm. Yes, because if I'd asked him one question, I said they're still being expanded upon his first answer by this point. And then, um, <laughs> To be fair, I mean, if, if um, his results are any good, he talks about the game, then he's on to a winner because he talks. About... The thing with him is, is that um, that I always found is obviously I grew up watching him. Um, yep. Obviously, got to speak to him as a manager, and as a player, I always thought he'd be a nasty, horrible person with a bald skin head, and he just kicked folk about. Him. <laughs> but as a player, uh, one of the nicest guys in football. No, he's 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 a very aggressive player, um, a bit of an animal, really. If 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 you're against him. But he's one of the guys who you would want in your team. You need somebody like that in your team. But if 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 you're on the wrong, wrong side of a tackle from him, then you're going to feel it. If you know what I mean, because he doesn't stop, he doesn't hold back, and and I, and I can imagine him being like that as a manager, like really, really hard be, be on the boys. And I mean, maybe he's not like that, but just just to, just the way he was as a player, then I think he might be. But it would be, it would, it would be interesting to be. Now that I've played with him, to be working under him, it would be interesting to see how how he would be if he would change or if, if he would become softer or, or I don't know. It would be quite interesting. I'm going to tell you that this is Mark's job pitch for St. Mirren coaching role slash other. <laughs> yeah, man. We'll see if we get to the final four and start pitching. <laughs> <Bye>. <laughs> But aye, how do you, um, obviously spoke about it a wee bit, but how do you see Sunday going? Um, it's obviously a big one as well, because if they get to the final, then not that it'll be an easy task, but it's St. Johnson and Hibs, which are a lot um, less ominous than other teams. Definitely. Um, I, I think, I'm not I'm not really confident that something they're going to go. I hope, I'm more hopeful, but I think it'll be one goal will decide the game either way, like maybe 1-0 or 2-1, 3-2, something like that. Because I think it's going to be very tight, maybe quite tactical. I think both teams will play quite defensive and, and try and counter because anything can happen if it's an open, expansive game, then then anything can happen. But so I would I would imagine them be to be quite reserved, if you know what I mean. Not just go for it. Um but I mean I, I might prove me wrong, but I would say it's gonna be a tight game and I mean you may even go to penalties or the extra time. I'm not sure. But I'll try and watch it best I can anyway and hopefully Saint Mirren get to the final.